Tech for Good Tinkers and Caregiving Circuit Pythonistas. This is Prof G, and in this lesson, we're going to build a box that can be programmed to light up when it's time to take medications. This is a practical project tackling a big important problem, and it shows how you now have enough skills to build something with big impact using less than $20 in parts and your own skill. Let's build! Quick disclaimer, this isn't meant to be an actual medical device, it's a simple demonstration project. If someone has very serious medical issues, make sure they take appropriate precautions to make sure they regularly receive their meds. The author is not responsible for any mishaps that might occur from project use. It can be tough to remember to take your medications and supplements. Even with a container like this, someone might still forget and skip a dose. Now, prescription non-adherence is a major healthcare and financial issue, resulting in avoidable hospitalizations and costing thousands of lives and billions of dollars. Now, while this project isn't meant to be a real medical device in its current state, this learning exercise demonstrates how a handful of parts costing less than $20 can be easily programmed for big impact. Now, here's how the final product works. Plug it in and a light flashes, showing the box is ready to start working. Opening the lid turns off the flashing light and sets the pre-programmed alerts. And when an alert time is reached, the alert light goes on, saying it's time to take your meds. Open the lid, take your meds, and the light goes off until the next alert time is reached. Here's a wiring diagram for the parts that I'm using. I'm using pin GP14 and a Raspberry Pi Pico W for the magnetic door switch, and pin GP15 for the anode or positive leg of the LED bulb. And in an earlier lesson, we calculated that my LED bulb should also use a 100 ohm resistor. One thing worth noting, so when you're testing, I found that it was important to orient the switch properly. So I've got my wired switch portion so that the part with the holes in it is oriented vertically, like it would be attached to the box. And this top part with the magnet in it is oriented horizontally with the magnet hanging down below, just like it would be if it were attached to the lid and it were resting on top of the switch. Now, if you've been following our earlier CircuitPython school tutorials, you've already got enough skill to build this. So why don't you challenge yourself by putting together the parts and writing the code on your own? Then I'll show you my solution for comparison, and I'll show you how you can assemble this into a final working box build. So to tackle this challenge, create a list of alarm times that you can use to schedule alerts. So the times are shown as strings in a list, the times have colons between hours and minutes, and be sure to use 24-hour time. Then, when the box first turns on, the LED should flash at half-second intervals. This is useful because if the power goes out, the flashing notifies the user that they might not have seen an earlier alert. Then, when the lid is open, the flashing stops and the box is armed for alerts. Alert should be set at this point so that when the next alert happens, the red light should go on and remain on until the lid is lifted up and the user takes out their meds. Now, the LED will remain turned off as the box awaits for its next alert time, and when that time's reached, the LED light will turn on again. So, this is your challenge. Why don't you pause? give this a shot, then let's resume when you're ready and we'll compare answers. Now let's start with the code that we wrote in the last lesson. This sets the Pico's time over the internet and it schedules jobs to run at specific times, so we'll see that we've already written most of the code for this project. I'll change my leading comment up here to say medications reminder box. And after I import board, I'm also going to import digital I.O. I'm going to need that for both the LED and for the magnetic door switch. So let's first set up the list to hold the strings for alarm times. So alarm time should be strings in 24 hour time. Examples, 0 colon 00, 0 is midnight, 12 colon 00, 00 is noon. 11.59 p.m. is 23 colon 59. So I'll say alarm underscore times, the name of my variable, equals, and in brackets, for now, I'll just set something up for noon, 12 colon 00. Then we'll set up the LED. I'll call it LED, setting this equal to digital IO, dot digital in out, capital D, capital I, capital O. And in parentheses, we pass in the pin that we're using for our LED signal. That's board dot GP15 for me. Then we make sure that our digital in out is going to be an output. So we say LED dot switch underscore two underscore output, open and close parens. And I'll initially turn the LED on, LED.value equals capital T true. Although I want to flash the LED when the program is first running, so I'm going to create a variable called flash, and I'm going to set that equal to true. The comment should say flash LED when program is first run, not run pending. That was Moo thinking it was helping me with code completion, but it wasn't. Then we'll set up the door sensor magnetic switch. So we'll call that door underscore sensor, setting that equal to digital IO dot digital in out with a capital D, capital I, capital O, just like above. This time we're passing in board dot GP14. And this time this is going to be an input. Remember our magnetic switch is like a button. So we'll say door underscore sensor dot switch underscore two underscore input. And in between parentheses, we need to set up our pull-up resistor. So we'll say lowercase pull equals digital IO dot pull with a capital P dot in all caps up UP. Then our code is looking pretty good for getting time. I'm going to clean this up a little bit because I think I print out too much. That was good for testing, but I really don't need to print out my Unix time, raw offset, and location time. So I'm going to delete that. 
I'm also going to delete the printing of the current time right here, but I'll leave in the printable time and date. I think it's always good to have that print out when we access the time over the internet. Then I'll change our job function up here. So if this runs, I want to turn the LED on. So I'll say LED.value equals true. So that'll turn on the light. And I'm just going to print out a message that says time to take your meds. Then I'm going to delete the old scheduling of these jobs. And what I'm going to do is go through my list of alarm time. So I'll say for alarm underscore time singular in alarm underscore times plural colon. So alarm underscore times is the list that's got the list of all the different times that I should schedule alarms for. This will go through all those alarm time strings. And I'll assume these are daily alarms, so I'll set schedule dot every open and close parens dot day dot at open and close parens, and in between those parens, it's going to be alarm underscore time. That's the individual alarm time in the array of alarm times I'm going through. Dot do and in parentheses pass in the job. So that schedules an alarm for every day at that particular alarm time. Then I'll just print out scheduled alarm at colon curly braces, and I got to put the F out front so this, this is an F string. Alarm underscore time singular. Then I'm going to change my while true in here. I don't want to check my pending schedule yet. What I'm going to do is see if I need to flash. So that happens when the program first starts. So I'm going to say if flash colon, so that's that variable that we set up top when the program first runs, led.value equals not led.value. So that will either turn the LED on or off, and time.sleep. 0.5 that's going to wait five seconds in between flashes then if the lid is lifted if door underscore sensor dot value colon so that's when the door is opened on the next line we'll just say print and i'll print out a message that says stop flash then set led dot value equal to false which will turn off the led and i want to set my flash variable equal to false as well to stop flashing so again recap this first part here handles what to do when the program first runs and it flashes to let the user know that it just restarted now remember it keeps doing this until the door is opened once the door is open, then we turn off the LED, we set the flash to false so that we never execute this block of code again. Then else, make sure that you outdent to that first indent. Remember, you always got a colon at the end of else or any other code that has indentations underneath it. And since the light isn't flashing, it's going to be steady at any alarm times. So if we're not flashing indented below this, we want to schedule dot run underscore pending open and close parens. That's going to check to see if we should run any jobs. And below this, we'll check to see if door underscore sensor dot value colon, that means the door is opened. And if so, we'll make sure that LED dot value equals capital F false, else colon, the door must be closed. So we'll just pass. Then I'll outdent back to the first level of the while true. So just one indent here and I'll say time.sleep passing in 0.2. Just to wait a tiny bit in between when we check things. And you know what else I want to do? I forgot to do this. I'd mentioned during the last lesson, it's a good idea to regularly update your time based on the time on the internet because the Pico W's real time clock can drift over time. So this will just make sure that everything is in sync. So we'll do that after we schedule the jobs and we'll just say schedule dot every open and close parens dot Dot day dot at open and close parens will pass in the string zero zero colon zero zero so that'll do this at midnight and we want to say dot do between parens call the function get underscore time so again this is going to update the time at midnight each day then i'll save this and open the serial console and we have no errors we can see that we're accessing the url and we're getting the time looking good so we start up and we're flashing, and when I pretend I'm opening the door by taking the magnet off of the switch, we see that the flashing stops. I'll put the magnet back on, and we see the light remains off. And you know what? Why don't we set an alarm? So you can see if you take a look up here that it's currently 12.10 p.m. when I'm recording this. I'm going to head up here and schedule my alarm for 12.11. Let's hope that gives us enough time. I'll do a quick save. We access the time. Here's my watch. It says it's 12.10. The alarm's scheduled at 12.11. We're flashing. Open the door. The flash stops. Now I'll wait for 12.11 to happen. I might forward the video a bit. And there we go. Look at that. The time turned to 12.11, and we can see the red light is on. Time to take the meds. I'll pretend I'm opening the door. The light goes off, and we're ready for our next scheduled meds time. Excellent job, Maker. Good build. Let's see how we can assemble this in a box. There are a lot of ways to put this together. Here's a simple and very quick build that I did for our class project. You can see that the Pico is foam taped to the back of the box. The LED and resistor are soldered directly to the Pico, as are the wires for the magnetic switch. There's a hole in the back of the box where these wires run to the magnetic switch, which is foam taped to the inside of the box. The wired switch is mounted to the side, and the magnet part of the switch is foam taped to the lid. 
So for the final build, you'll want a box. My students use the laser cutters in our campus makerspace to make their own wooden box with flexible lids. For the one that I'm showing here, I purchased this clear acrylic box that has a hinged lid. And you'll also want to drill a hole in the back of the box. That's where you'll thread the switch wires through. Now my students can just leave their projects wired to the breadboard so that their parts can be reusable, but for anybody wanting to create a permanent build, you'll likely want to solder the parts together. So here I've soldered my resistor to my anode or positive leg, I've cut them both shorter so that they can be roughly the size of the cathode leg, and I use some heat shrink around the resistor and solder joints to give the wires more strength, and to insulate the wires so that they won't touch each other and cause a short. I've also changed up my wiring for better placement, the LED uses pin GP0, and the ground is just two pins over from that. This will let me stick my Pico on the back of the box, and I have the USB coming out to the left. And I've wired the magnetic switch to GP16. I've mounted the wired part of my magnetic switch to the side of my box using foam sticky tape, and I've done the same for the top magnetic piece. Also make sure that the two pieces line up, your magnets won't register as closed, and your magnet switch probably has a closed side, which should go forward, and the side with a hole in it should be pointed toward the back. I used clear packing tape to secure loose wires to the side and back of my box, and the Pico is mounted to the back of the box with foam sticky tape. And that's it. I leave my meds reminder right next to my coffee maker so that I'm sure to dose up first thing in the morning, and I can clearly see if the light is on and I forgot a dose throughout the day. So I hope you're feeling good about those skills you're acquiring. This is a solid, useful build that leverages lots of what we learned about engineering, API calls, JSON parsing, and all sorts of other maker goodness. Be sure to come back. There's lots more big learning to come. In the meantime, make something awesome.